John Cabell Breckinridge was a lawyer and politician from the U.S. state of Kentucky. He represented the Commonwealth in both houses of Congress and in 1857, became the 14th and youngest ever Vice President of the United States, serving in the U.S. Senate at the outbreak of the Civil War. He was expelled after joining the Confederate Army. He remains the only Senator of the United States convicted of treason against the United States of America by the Senate. He was appointed Confederate Secretary of War late in the war. A member of the Breckinridge family, he was the grandson of U.S. Attorney General John Breckinridge, son of Kentucky Secretary of State Cabell Breckinridge and father of Arkansas Congressman Clifton R. Breckinridge. After non-combat service in the Mexican-American War, Breckinridge was elected as a Democrat to the Kentucky House of Representatives in 1849 where he took a states' as rights position against legal interference with slavery. Elected to the U.S. House of Representatives in 1851, he allied with Stephen A. Douglas in support of the Kansas-Nebraska Act. After reapportionment in 1854 made his re-election unlikely, he declined to run for another term. He was nominated for vice president at the 1856 Democratic National Convention to balance a ticket headed by Pennsylvanian James Buchanan. The Democrats won the election, but Breckinridge had little influence with Buchanan and, as presiding officer of the Senate, could not express his opinions in that body's debates. In 1859, he was elected to succeed U.S. Senator John J. Crittenden at the end of Crittenden's term in 1861, after Southern Democrats walked out of the 1860 Democratic National Convention. The party's northern and southern factions held rival conventions in Baltimore, Maryland that nominated Stephen Douglas and Breckinridge, respectively, for president. Breckinridge carried most of the southern states but no northern states and lost the election. Taking his seat in the Senate, he urged compromise to preserve the Union, although seven states had already seceded. Unionists took control of the state legislature when Kentucky's neutrality was breached. But Breckinridge fled behind Confederate battle lines where he was commissioned a brigadier general. He was then expelled from the Senate. After the April 1862 Battle of Shiloh, he was promoted to Major General, and in October he was assigned to the command of Braxton Bragg. After Bragg charged that Breckinridge's drunkenness had contributed to Confederate defeats at Stone River and Missionary Ridge, he was transferred to the Trans-Allegheny Department, where he won his most significant victory at the Battle of New Market. After participating in Jubal Early's 1864 campaigns in the Shenandoah Valley, he was charged with defending Confederate supplies in Tennessee and Virginia. In February 1865, Confederate President Jefferson Davis appointed him Secretary of War. Concluding that the war was hopeless, he urged Davis to arrange a national surrender. After the fall of the Confederate capital at Richmond, he ensured the preservation of Confederate military and governmental records. He then fled to Cuba, Great Britain, and finally, to Canada. In exile, he toured Europe from August 1866 to June 1868. When President Andrew Johnson extended amnesty to all former Confederates in late 1868, he returned to Kentucky, but resisted all encouragement to resume his political career. Issues from war injuries sapped to his health, and after two operations, he died on May 17, 1875. Early Life John C. Breckinridge was born at Thornhill, his family's estate near Lexington, Kentucky, on January 16, 1821, the fourth of six children born to Joseph Cabell and Mary Clay Breckinridge. He was their only son. His mother was the daughter of Samuel Stanhope Smith, who founded Hampton Sydney College in 1775, and granddaughter of John Witherspoon, a signer of the Declaration of Independence. Having previously served as Speaker of the Kentucky House of Representatives, 
His father had been appointed Kentucky's Secretary of State just prior to his son's birth. In February, the family moved with Governor John Adair to the governor's mansion in Frankfort, Kentucky. In August 1823, an illness referred to as the prevailing fever struck Frankfort, and Cabell Breckinridge took his children to stay with his mother in Lexington. On his return, both he and his wife fell ill, he died, but she survived. His assets were not enough to pay his debts, and his wife joined the children in Lexington, supported by her mother-in-law. While in Lexington, Breckenridge attended Pisgah Academy in Woodford County. His grandmother also taught him the political philosophies of her late husband, John Breckenridge, who served in the U.S. Senate and as Attorney General under President Thomas Jefferson. As a state legislator, Breckinridge had introduced the Kentucky Resolutions, which stressed states' rights and endorsed the doctrine of nullification. After an argument between Breckinridge's mother and grandmother in 1832, he, his mother, and his sister Letitia moved to Danville, Kentucky to live with his sister, Frances and her husband, who was president of Center College. Breckinridge's uncle, William Breckinridge, was also on the faculty there, prompting him to enroll in November 1834. Among his schoolmates were Beriah McGoffin, William Burney, Theodore O'Hara, Thomas L. Crittenden and Jeremiah T. Boyle. After earning a Bachelor of Arts degree in September 1838, he spent the winter of 1838-1839 as a resident graduate at the College of New Jersey. Returning to Kentucky in mid-1839, he read law with Judge William Owsley. In November 1840, he enrolled in the second year of the law course at Transylvania University in Lexington, where his instructors included two members of the Kentucky Court of Appeals, George Robertson and Thomas A. Marshall. On February 25, 1841, he received a Bachelor of Laws degree and was licensed to practice the next day. Early legal career Breckinridge remained in Lexington while deciding where to begin practice, borrowing law books from the library of John J. Crittenden, Thomas Crittenden's father. Deciding that Lexington was overcrowded with lawyers, he moved to Frankfurt, but was unable to find an office. After being spurned by a love interest, he and former classmate Thomas W. Bullock resolved to relocate to Iowa Territory in October 1841. Journeying westward, they considered settling on land Breckenridge had inherited in Jacksonville, Illinois. But they found the bar stocked with able men like Stephen A. Douglas and Abraham Lincoln. They continued on to Burlington, Iowa, and by the winter of 1842-1843, Breckinridge reported to family members that his firm handled more cases than almost any other in Burlington. Influenced by Bullock and the citizens of Iowa, he identified with the Democratic Party, and by February 1843, he had been named to the Democratic Committee of Des Moines County. Most of the Kentucky Breckinridges were Whigs, and when he learned of his nephew's party affiliation, William Breckinridge declared, I felt as I would have done if I had heard that my daughter had been dishonored. Breckinridge visited Kentucky in May 1843. His efforts to mediate between his mother and the Breckinridges extended his visit and after he contracted influenza, he decided to remain for the summer rather than returning to Iowa's colder climate. While at home, he met Bullock's cousin, Mary Cyrene Birch, and by September, they were engaged. In October, Breckenridge went to Iowa to close out his business, then returned to Kentucky and formed a law partnership with Samuel Bullock, Thomas's cousin. He married on December 12, 1843, and settled in Georgetown, Kentucky. The couple had six children, Joseph Cabell, Clifton Rhodes, Francis, John Milton, John Witherspoon and Mary DeShaw. Gaining confidence in his ability as a lawyer, Breckenridge moved his family back to Lexington in 1845 and formed a partnership with future U.S. Senator James B. Beck. 
Mexican-American War. A supporter of the Mexican-American War, Breckenridge sought appointment to the staff of William O. Butler, but Butler could only offer him an unpaid aide position and advised him to decline it. In July 1847, he delivered an address at a mass military funeral in Frankfurt to honor Kentuckians killed in the Battle of Buena Vista, during which Henry Clay, whose son was among the dead, wept. The oration inspired Theodore O'Hara to write the bivouac of the dead. Breckinridge again applied for a military commission after William Owsley, then governor of Kentucky, called for two additional regiments on August 31, 1847. Owsley's advisers encouraged the Whig governor to commission at least one Democrat, John J. Crittenden supported Breckinridge's application. On September 6, 1847, he appointed Manlius V. Thompson as Colonel, Thomas L. Crittenden as Lieutenant Colonel and Breckinridge as Major of the 3rd Kentucky Infantry Regiment. The regiment left Kentucky on November 1 and reached Vera Cruz by November 21. After several men became ill at Vera Cruz, the regiment hurried to Mexico City. Reports indicate that Breckinridge walked all but two days of the journey, allowing weary soldiers to use his horse. When the 3rd Kentucky reached Mexico City on December 18, the fighting was almost over. They participated in no military action and remained in the city as an army of occupation until May 30, 1848, in demand more for his legal expertise than his military training. He was named as assistant counsel for Gideon Johnson Pillow during a court of inquiry initiated against him by Winfield Scott. Seeking to derail Scott's presidential ambitions, Pillow and his supporters composed and published letters that lauded Pillow, not Scott, for the American victories at Contreras and Jerobusco. To hide his involvement, Pillow convinced a subordinate to take credit for the letter he wrote. Breckinridge biographer William C. Davis writes that it was most unlikely that Breckinridge knew the details of Pillow's intrigue. His role in the proceedings was limited to questioning a few witnesses. Records show that Pillow represented himself during the court's proceedings. Returning to Louisville on July 16, 1848, the Third Kentucky mustered out on July 21. During their time in Mexico, over 100 members of the 1,000-man regiment had died of illness. Breckinridge's nominal military service proved an asset to his political prospects in Kentucky.